Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Turfin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to XCOM 2, the Valkyrie playthrough where we only deploy female soldiers. Our squad of Valkyries is ready to go on our second retaliation mission called Operation Mountain Slap. I do like that. I always want to slap a mountain if I come across one. But we need to uh, protect a haven from uh, further advent forces and rescue as many civilians as possible. On this mission, we're going to take the specialist Kelly Brown, our Reaper Elena Dragunova, one of our rangers, our best ranger by the way, Heidi Hogan, Jacqueline Morales, our uh, Grenadier, and Lena Bauer, our uh, first Templar. So here we go, squad is ready, let's head into, uh, well, Firebrand, and let's go. So there we go, defend the Haven from Assault. We're uh, ready in the Sky Ranger. And uh, yeah, I think we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna use Elena's shadow ability to rescue as many civilians before, of course, we encounter our first faces. So it's a moderate mission, so probably gonna deal with about four, probably five groups of enemies. So we need to be careful about that, but let's go. So there we go, dropping in. And uh, we're gonna move Elena first. Everything's on fire again, so that's always nice. And 19 civilians. Assault on the resistance encampment in this area. Our people are doing what they can to fight back, but we need to help protect the civilians trapped nearby. Well, wait, said so, oh. There's a group of resistance soldiers hunkered down not far from your position. Move in and help fend off the attacking alien forces. Okay. So there's actually two extra soldiers on the field now, because I was thinking that the amount of civilians was a bit too high. Uh, I'm gonna move up Elena first, as I said, since she's in shadow. So as long as we don't see any enemies with her, we should be fine. So let's put it on the side of the building over here. And that should get a side inside and beyond the building. Okay, a mech and a viper. But that's only once we're over there. So they're pretty far away. We can just see them. Ooh, that's probably through the church over here. So I'm guessing, yeah, so this is a search. Oh, look at that. The Queens of War. Alessia and Sarah have a poster on the side of the building here. That is really, really cool. So let's move Jacqueline up and let's move everybody up because uh, we need to start moving in as fast as possible. Oh, crap. There's enemies on the right. Ooh. Looks like they're still serving as the aliens front line though. Mutons. They've added mutons. Newton and a purifier. This is not good, because I just spent all Lena's movement abilities and she's completely exposed over there. So yeah, this is this is not good. I'm gonna have to run and gun, but even that won't kill the muton. Um, yeah, this is gonna require a flashbang immediately. Uh, so I can't actually hit the purifier from there. Which is interesting. So this, this was a bit of a... Wait a second, this, this map is completely... Oh wow, it goes out in all directions. I think we were dropped right in the middle of the map. Yeah, this is not good. But this seems to end over here around, so there shouldn't be more enemies behind the Purifier and the Muton, so... Okay, okay, let's deal with what we have. Kelly can still move down and she's pretty well protected if we put her over here. And I can use Combat Protocol to hit at least one of them over there, because I want to protect Lena there. So, we only have three more actions. Because I've put Elena all the way over there. Um, and Lena is already out of actions too. Because I didn't assume there was going to be anything here. So completely my fault. But. Let's run and gun. Ooh, this is going to be... Is that tree? That tree is on the same height as that. So I think if I put... Yeah, Heidi over there. I should be able to fire the shotgun at the mutant. But let's start with the... Mm, the grenade is probably not going to reach. Because, yeah, the flashbang has a wider range. Okay, I'm going to have to fire at it first. So let's put Kelly down here. Which is a pretty good position. 
and then we can move Heidi with run and gun. So let's activate that run and gun. Put it over here. I think that would, should still give us sight on the mutal. And put it over here. This is a this is a great start to the, to this video. Um, the mutant is now exposed, but it's seventy eight percent. We have a very high critical hit chance, though, so that could technically work out. Um, I don't know if the disorientation actually does anything extra. No, it just disorients, so it it will just reduce their aim. So I'm gonna disorient the. Mutant now, because I can't do anything else. I think I can't reach the purifier, so disorient the mutant now. I know it's a waste of my flashbang really early on, but I don't want to get because Lena only has six health. I think the mutant is actually able to probably one shot her from this range. Um, so let's shoot at the mutant with the short gun. 78 is still able to miss. But there we go, 8 and a critical, so that probably almost takes it out. So that means that with... Oh, I don't have... Oh, I don't have combat protocol on Kelly just yet. I could, however, give another... Ooh. That's gonna have to be it. I'm gonna use Kelly's teamwork to give another action point to Heidi. There we go. So let's do that. And then we can fire again. Or we could use a grenade. And the grenade actually could take out... No, I can't take out the purifier's cover. But I'm guaranteed to kill the mutant. Although it is with explosives. And I don't want to risk it. I, don't want, I know I've disoriented him now, but... Probably should kill him if I can. Um, so yeah, there goes the grenade. I don't need to hesitate about this. I really need to kill it. Boom! There we go. Loot destroyed though, so that's sad because it did have some loot. But the pur purifier is running away as expected. Okay, that's good. Now probably the mech and the viper are gonna roll in. Oh wow, they just they just went for it, didn't they? There we go, viper. The Viper and the Mac. Spotted flanked enemy. Oh, please don't shoot. And the resistance gets in action as well. And they're gonna fire. Ooh, nice flank shot of the, the Viper. One damage. They just grazed him because the. That's our first dodge action, by the way. You're not going into very good positions there. And that's another miss. So these guys can't shoot for shit. Great, got it. So we still have that purifier nearby, so we're gonna have to be careful, but. Elena now is in action. We have a 100% shot at the Viper or hmm, a worse shot at, but it's still 89, so that's pretty good. But, 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 we also have Jacqueline. Jacqueline has Shredder on her cannon attacks, but I think she's probably going to be too far away to fire at the mech. So yeah, we can only fire at the Viper from here. Lena can definitely rend the Viper. So if we go for that, that's 100% hit chance on the Viper. So definitely can kill the Viper. Now, Kelly. Can Kelly move up in one? No. Crap, there's not an easy way to get back up here. Well, there are vines over there, but... I don't want to risk it with that uh, purifier nearby. So basically, Heidi and Kelly are now useless because they're down here. On my way. So if I move Heidi over there, that doesn't bring the purifier back inside, so that's fine. Since Jacqueline can't really do anything else, let's try her 50-50 shot on the Viper. Because that might actually help us out. If that hits, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, Lena can finish off the Viper. And Kelly... I could put Kelly over here in full cover. On the move. So she's at least up there again. And only Heidi is in the firing range of anything else that's up there. Uh, I could even move her closer. I don't want to risk it with the mech around. 
No, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna put her closer because she doesn't have any other actions to use. So let's put Heidi over here on... Yeah, on Overwatch. Then, uh, Elena has her guaranteed shot on the Viper, so that's 100%. She can dodge, but she doesn't, then we get a critical shot. Oh. That's even more interesting, because now... The only thing left is that... Huh. That mech. Um, I should probably... If I move Lena through the building... I can get her closer while the mech doesn't really know where she is. Although, if... It does know, by any chance, why where I am, it could use a grenade over there. So I'm not gonna use it. I'm just gonna put Lena inside the building over here. It's far, but I can reach it. There we go, let's just dash inside and put it over there in full cover. So now the mech is gonna be have free reign. I think he's probably gonna be able to shoot one of the resistance fighters. Yeah, there he goes. I mean, it was a guy. It's not a problem. Advent isn't backing off. They've got units in the AO that are ignoring our forces just to get a better shot at the civilians. Take those bastards down. We will, Bradford, we will. We're doing a pretty nice job on that front, if I do say so myself. But uh, I don't think Elena has shredded on her weapons. So I think I'm just going to move Jacqueline close. Because now she has a 75% chance shot. But if you put her closer, you can actually get a better shot on that yet so that's 82 with oh no she doesn't have shredding that's right okay so we don't have shredding we don't have shredding renders four to five damage so if i can get this is definitely not over yet Moving on target let's put location. kelly closer and let's see what her shoulder is she has a 74 percent chance shot if she maximizes her damage we could actually finish this off at rend that's only 5 damage, that's the minimum she could have done. Uh, so that means... Heidi can go back up. Okay. I don't think the Purifier actually has a long range attack. So Heidi could definitely finish this off, but she's the highest ranking over here. So if I just use the cannon attack, could also do 6 damage. Yeah, there we go. And it goes down. Hey, I'm then, Elena can go into shadow again and go right next to the civilians over here. Uh, so there we go. My life is in your hands. And now, now what? Or do I really need to be in that square? This is weird. Um, hi? It's, that didn't even change anything, so... Uh, no biggie, I suppose, but we need to move up. You have my trust. We need to move up, but also need to be careful. I don't want to trigger anything just no yet. I just want to get everybody back in the game here. So Elena hasn't seen anything, so I think I'm pretty safe to put Heidi over there, unless we see the purifier again. There's a large group of civilians pinned down within range of your position. Sensors indicate hostile forces are closing in fast. We need to get in there before the aliens slaughter those people. So there's four more soldiers over there. Um, and I don't know what actually just changed by us going over here. So save the trapped civilians. That probably means we need to head over there. So there we go, moved everybody up. And now... Okay, so there's a la That's two lancers, I think. That's one of the guards, I think, that was just killed. And now there's resistance activity, so we're going to see some movement over there. So they're moving along. And they're firing back at the Lancers. They're completely going to miss, because these guys can't shoot straight. And that guy can also shoot over there, so there's definitely another... That was another Lancer, I think. They're all Lancers. So that's bad, because Lancers can move quickly. Okay, so let's put... Elena over here 
so we can have a better look at everything that's going on downstairs. Well, not downstairs, but down in the lower area. We don't see anything. Let's reload Jacqueline. And then put Callie on Overwatch, because I think she still has an action there. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, crap. Are you freaking kidding me? There's a faceless in between all the civilians. Well, that's gonna hurt, because that guy can actually have a wide sweeping attack. And there, of course, yeah, there's a purifier again with the two Lancers. So we do get one Overwatch shot, and that misses. Okay. But that does look like the Lancer now doesn't have cover anymore. And of course there's the... Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Resistance, are you gonna... Oh, for fuck's sake. They're not inside just yet, but that's three more <laughs> enemies. Ah... Uh... Hello, you gonna hit anything? Oh, he does. That Lancer is actually pretty damaged. I could probably use Lena on him. And that's another hit on that Lancer because he lost his cover. Aha. Okay, things aren't as bleak as they seem. People are getting fired upon. And they're all hitting. Which is also really good. There we go, another one. If they would kill one of those, that would actually... Oh, they only can do two damage, probably two to three damage, I would assume. So we have our work cut out for us. Is there a way I can kill multiple ones? I think I should probably be able to make something detonate that kills multiple people here. So if I use the claymore, the, so that's shrapnel. That's 8 damage. I can put that so right over here. So that's going to take out both of these guys. Like that. There we go. And then we can actually shoot at that. Oh. So fire shot at a target. That should take out both of them. So here we go. 3, 2, 1. Big explosion. Yeah. Uh, I think they're gone. The resistance team is in the clear. They're moving to help the other survivors. Aha. So that's great. So we saved four civilians in one go there because the... Uh, uh, because the purifier was counted towards the two groups that were threatening that group. Okay, so that, that kind of makes sense. Now, I think priority... It's going to have to be that Faceless, because the Faceless can actually take out pretty much everyone around them. Because he has a sweeping melee attack. That's 100% for the rend, and that's 4 to 5 damage. So I could probably end Lena with that. But there's also two guys over there. Also need to be careful to not move up too far. Because, of course, there are three more enemies over here, outside of the building. So if I tr would trigger them right now, that would be very, very bad. I do want to take out that Lancer over there as well. So according to this, this would technically not hit the Lancer, because the Lancer for some reason isn't in red. But I feel like he's in the circle. No? I'm going to try this. So I move Jacqueline up a bit. So this would guarantee a double kill over here. I'm just going to try it. You never know what we're going to get. There we go. Is it sometimes is really buggy? Because it looks like it should kill the Lancer there. And it actually doesn't. It actually doesn't kill the Lancer. Okay, so the game was right about that. I think we're going to have to do it like this. So, Kelly, Kelly can move up. And actually kill the Lancer over there. Um, problem is, he is in full cover. And I'm just gonna have this shot against him. Hmm. Probably should switch that up. Can Heidi... Heidi actually has running gun. So Heidi has running gun, so I think I can kill... I'm actually not gonna waste a running gun on him. 
If I just use Blade Mask, I can kill the Stun Lancer guaranteed. But, on the other hand, I want to be sure that I do enough damage with the laser rifle, the magnetic rifle, to kill the faceless. So let's put Kali down first. Moving to position. Like this, right next to, right outside of the window. And then we can have an 85% shot at the faceless. If we hit at least six damage, we can guarantee a kill with Lena. Whew. Okay, six damage. That's good. So now Lena can use rent. And I need to be careful here, because I think I, I can even do that from a position of a civilian. Um, fair enough. Oh, I don't want to trigger those back tree aliens now. And I don't think the pistol does enough damage, so we're going to have to try it anyway. Here we go, moving in, and then slash for damage, and we gain momentum. Damn it, okay. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's gonna be a big problem. So those guys know. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, I'm just gonna put uh, Lena, Lena out of the way. Lena, Lena can go uh, just, just out of the way. I don't really have a good position for her now. Um, yeah, let's put Lena over here. She's gonna open up the door like that. Um, okay, let's put Lena on the side of the building then. The Lancers all have shots at her, but yeah, there we go. Lena over there, let's hope they kill some more civilians after this. Uh, now we still have Heidi, but Heidi, I was going to use Heidi to kill that, yeah, that guy over there. So let's not put her in the middle of all of that and just let her kill the, yeah, that, that one over there. Yeah, so she's out of the way a bit. Oh, this is going to end badly, isn't it? There we go. Lots of running and jumping and all of that excitement and slash. Okay. So we have four more enemies left. But that was the end of our turn. So they're going in. And they're probably going to fire at civilians. Okay. I feel like that's fine. I mean, they're not my soldiers, so just... Fire away! They're not even firing at the resistance fighters, which is also interesting. And then the Mac. Is he gonna drop a bomb in there? Okay, he's going on the roof. And he's going back down again. Is he confused? Is that with two actions? Oh, and they stab one of the resistance fighters who apparently only have three health. But that was it. I am glad with that result. Um... Yeah, go, go ahead, fire away. Destroy their cover, whatever you want to do. Oh, they're all grouped together, but I think I'm out of everything. I think I'm out of everything. But they're dropping in. Fire away! Aha, there we go, that's two damage. That gives us a guaranteed kill on that Lancer. And then, uh, stop, oh, oh, that's even better. Yep, just spread out the damage a bit so I can kill everybody. Okay. Um, I think we can start using some psionic abilities. Because you have one focus with Elena. <laughs> and by the way, Elena is still still in shadow for some reason. Um, I could blow up some cars. But I don't think that will help us. Because they're all right next to, you know, the good guys. Let's put Elena right next to the building over here, giving her a better shot at pretty much everyone here. But, of course, we don't have high damage with, Lena's, uh, with Elena. It, this is getting confusing. We have an Elena and a Lena now, so... And they're from the... They're probably the starting units for both of those factions, so that's a bit weird, but... Okay, no, let's not worry about all of that now. I still have a grenade on Lena, but Lena has the more interesting abilities, of course. I could rend and kill that stun lancer over there, but we also have Volt. Volt does 2 to 5 damage, but that's, of course, risky 
You know what? He's the only one that I can't really reach. And apparently the damage is amplified because I have extra focus. Uh, so let's... Can't I kill... Oh, I can't kill that guy as well. But this guy is the only one in full cover from my... Well, it's half cover, apparently. But uh, let's go slash him. Yeah, suffer her rage, because this is going to be awesome! I do love that animation. It's just so... No so horrifying. And there we go. Maximum focus. And we get momentum. So I'm going to just wait with that. Kelly. Kelly has a flank shot on that one and a flank shot on that one. The right one is pretty much down for the count. So I'm going to focus fire on Aldo. She has the weakest weapon, I think. Wait, 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 wait. I think Jacqueline actually has the weakest weapon. So let's put Jacqueline down here. Of course it is. It's definitely doable. And fire away at the weakest one. So she has a chance to actually kill this guy. If we hit. There we go. Whacked right into Lena's crutch. We have still a momentum move, but we don't really care about that now. The magnetic rifle on the stun lens. It could kill. But I don't want to... I need to be careful about the mech as well. What else do we have? We have Heidi. Heidi could probably go... We still have a running gun shot with... Hi Let's go down, please. Yeah, thank you. We have a run and gun shot with Heidi, but there's no cover for her to fire from. This is... this might be a problem, because the resistance fighters took all the good cover. Uh, so the only thing I really have left is over here. Let's do that. So let's just go into run and gun. Go inside of the building underneath, well behind the counter here. And then fire at the mech, because I just remembered we actually do more damage, I think, on targets that the companions have. So the bone mates actually have fired upon. So if I fire at the mech from here with the shotgun, that's five damage, which is, I think, definitely not the maximum. But Kelly now has increased damage, I think. I mean, she can even kill it now, so why not try that? There we go, there we goes. It wasn't increased damage, but probably increased aim against it. Now, we only have a shot at the stun lancer now, and she could reveal like this. But I think we're gonna have to take it. So there we go. Shot from shadow. Four damage, that's the maximum she could do, aside from a critical. And she's not revealed. Which is good. And then Lena, I can probably just put on top of the roof. I'm gonna actually do that. Just put her away on top of the roof. She looks awesome with her purple glowy hands. And there we go. So one more Lancer available to fire at whatever he sees. Oh, he's just gonna stab. Oh, they, they do have three health. Confirmed. And resistance. Like th they might actually kill him. They're gonna be raging on that guy. You killed my buddies! There we go! Oh, that was even a critical. So three damage on the critical. And that's it. Secured the remaining civilians and there are no other hostile contacts on the scope. That was awesome. So we killed 12 enemies. Well, we killed 11. The resistance fighters killed one. No wounds and no kills. No soldiers killed. That is really good. We, kill, we killed all of them in seven turns. That was flawless. I can't say that better than that. So 90% successful shot percentage by the way that means i think we only missed one shot um so the ladies are definitely uh, getting better and better here and uh lena actually moves around quite a lot and look at that poster that's a really really cool poster by the way um but i'm really a fan of the templars now because it's really cool that their damage gets amplified the more kills they get so the more focus they accrue because uh rend actually increases in damage as well the best and that's what you've shown them commander well done. Thank you. Thank you, Bradford. I really feel good about that. So now, Jacqueline, I have a bomb available. 
Uh, so Jacqueline and Elena now have a bond available. So I'm gonna do exactly that. So very hot. Ooh. Wait. So they've. Oh, 9.8 with the Templar. Wait, how does that exactly work? And what's what's with Jacqueline then? Jacqueline still has just seven with Elena, but 9.8 is a higher number. So. So if you put, but what's the difference between compatibility and cohesion? It's very high, it's, it's basically the max. Yeah, let's do that. Let's put Elena with Lena. <laughs> Elena Lena, the Elena Lena squad, there we go. Confirm the bond with, confirm the bond with, no? Oh, we can only confirm once we reached maximum cohesion. And since, yeah, so we can't really, so even if we go from here, we can't confirm that because, ah, that's why I couldn't confirm the bond. It's just growing, but it's not available just yet. So I could technically go with this, but we're not going to do that just yet because I think it's going to be better if we pair Elena with Lena. So we have the Reaper and the Templar in the same squad always. Um, but let's promote Kelly because Kelly can now get... A revival protocol or haywire protocol? I think her hacking is that higher or lower than I think it's lower. So let's just go with. I mean, haywire protocol is just too good to pass up. Revival is good, but think I think we have a few extra ways we can do revival now. So let's just do a haywire protocol. And if we have enough extra ability points, we might even just get revival protocol on her as well. Uh, although I think I might actually go for combat protocol first. But then, the more interesting one, Elena gets another promotion. So that means we now get the lieutenant's rank. Um, the silent killer. Kills with the vector rifle do not increase the reaper's chance to break out of shadow. But the chance to reveal still occurs. So 50-50 remains. But it doesn't go up once we shoot. Not that Good for now, because we don't actually do a lot of damage with the Vector Rifle for now. So, shooting with her is limited, aside from using the, the Claymore, which is now really good. A kill with the Claymore puts the Reaper into shadow. Oh. That is really good as well. Shots taken in shadow have plus two armor piercing. So, it ignores armor. Which is actually probably better than Shredder. Because Shredder is probably going to only shred one piece of armor. Although the combination of both Needle and Shredding would be really, really good. Or Hollow Targeting, any directed Vector Rifle shot hit or miss will mark the target, increasing your squad's aim by 15 against this target. So I think what I really want is definitely Needle and Hollow Targeting. Because Hollow Targeting is something that the Grenadiers used to have. And now it seems like the Reaper has this. Um... I think Needle is going to be better, so shots taken in Shadow have plus two armor piercing, so we could technically take out armor targets with a three to four damage shot with Elena. We don't really have a damage boost over here, aside from, of course, Needle, so I'm going to go with Needle first. There we go. Because uh, technically we could do that at least two times, because Shadow, we can reinstate Shadow later on. We still have six ability points, but I'm going to save them up. For whatever we're gonna get later on because we still have three more ranks with about eight more possible abilities so let's save those up and now we have probably my favorite trooper right now because lena is really cool even though she doesn't have the highest damage output this is just way too cool to just leave around um overcharge rend attacks have a 33 percent chance to generate focus don't we generate focus with rend always so it generates focus on kills, but it now... Oh, so it has a 33% chance to generate focus regardless of kills. That's not that good, I think. Pillar, summon a pillar of psionic energy to act as a high cover. Okay, useful, but not entirely, because at this difficulty, the aliens have pretty good aim. But then we get stun strike, strike an enemy with psionic force, knocking them back in the direction of the attack. That is cool, because I think that actually works... With environmental damage, I feel like that this is the same thing as the the punch with the mech from Enemy Within. Because that, if you hit them into an explosive object, such like a car, you immediately trigger that explosion as well. If you hit them in the wall, that's also extra damage. 
So... Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to go for Stun Strike here. There we go. That sounds like a very, very good ability. Parry is also something that sounds very, very interesting. Because preventing all damage from the next attack basically makes her impervious if we need to leave one guy alive. And if she's out in the open, she's going to be the primary target, but be immune to damage. So as long as the enemies don't know that, I don't know how the AI works with that, that's going to be a very interesting ability as well. Might even, 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 even go for that. Yeah, parry. Just use five ability points from the shared pool. I think I'm gonna... Yeah, that might actually save a lot of lives. So there we go. Five XCOM ability points from the shared pool into Elena. There we go. We still have 11 left, so that's fine. Now, do we bond Elena with Jacqueline or not? I don't think so. I'm gonna bond Elena with Lena. Yeah, we're gonna do exactly that in the, probably the next mission. Lena needs to rest a bit because she's tired. But I feel like she might wait, well, get rested uh, by the next mission. So we rescued 13 civilians, so that's really good. We get our first Mutant Corpse, a Viper, cor Viper Corpse, two Macrax, five Stun Lances, that was a lot. Two Purifiers and a Faceless. And we get the Mutant, the Aliens Primary Shock Troops are even more dangerous than they were when we faced them during the invasion. Our hope is that we can emulate their plasma-based explosives for our purpose. You have done an outstanding job leading the Resistance Command. Why thank you, I re I'm really really glad. So the monthly income from East Africa has been increased by 39 supplies, which is really good. So that's basically 3 per uh, civilian we saved. So I could do a bond, I'm not going to do that just yet. So the game is going to keep screaming at me apparently for that. But in two days, we can actually build the uh, power center. I don't know why I called it these days. It's days. So two days, we're going to be able to make a very, very fancy the power facility. So with that done, we get Scorched Earth. So eight days for Intel. But do we have anything else? I think we were building something, right? There we go. Power coil is shielded while the, uh, the Warlock was uh, jabbering on about chosen and stuff like that so let's check that room consumption reached so we really need to start making that resistance ring oh god the resistance ring doesn't actually need power i should have i should have probably checked that or does it not oh nothing goes power over here since it's on top of a power coil so let's build the power relay over here okay so let's have an engineer assist that only takes six days because of the engineer okay now i'm just quickly gonna check and we actually have a level two bomb that's been completed as well Maximum can i build anything reached. no so i can't build anything you'll need three power fine fine that's good uh we still have a few extra engineers though so let's clear the alien debris on the left here with uh our two remaining engineers because i think oh no i can only put one engineer over here Interesting. So I definitely have one extra engineer now. That's probably not going to help too much. And in six days, we'll be able to start making more. Building. Although, you know what? I don't really. We can actually get that going as well. Um, do we need anybody in the infirmary right now? Let's get back for a second. So the bond training is complete. So if we check that. In the training center, we don't actually get anything fancy popping up it's just yeah we can form the bond between elena and jacqueline but we're not going to do that just yet so skip so since nobody is wounded at the moment i think the healing rate only applies to wounds so not tiredness so if we can use that second engineer to continue well decrease the uh, excavating time over here that's going to be nice because four engineers is really really good uh so we have 10 days on both those rooms and since it takes six days to make that power relay, that's going to be most of our time spent in a really, really efficient manner. So, let's get back to the bridge and finish that radio relay. Because that's going to boost up our supply gain in six days as well. So, let's continue building that. There we go. And we have a fancy... That, that took five days to make, that thing. It looks like something that a few MacGyvers cobbled together. <laughs> But, yeah, apparently it seems to work. Hi. And of course, this is the complete tower, but still looks a bit uh, cobbled together. But uh, our second radio, radio relay is complete. There we go.
very fancy. Very, very fancy. We could start building another one. So we get 100 extra supplies and we get the continent bonus because we only need to do place two relays over here. So now experimental ammo projects in the proving grounds are completed instantly. That is really good. We could still make one over here, but I feel like this one is the most important one. What is the pursuit of knowledge? Laboratory facilities boost an additional 20% boost to research times. That's not that interesting. So I think I'm going to go to South America. Any recruits training in the... Ooh. Oh. That is, the guerrilla tactics school will immediately go to sergeant. That sounds good. So if we can... Oh no, we can't contact South America just yet because we're at capacity with our contacts. Okay. So with that in mind, we have either a scientist, intel, or supplies. I think intel is the most versatile. So let's go for intel over here. Because we're going to get supplies in a, well, in a few days anyway. Which is good, which is good, which is good. So eight days. Here we go. And absolutely nothing happens, apparently. There we go. Five days and nothing happened. So I think this is the month that we're going to have to hit the alien facility. But we stopped the retaliation, completed the guerrilla operation and a resistance operation, contacted the region, installed the radio relay, researched five technologies and completed the covert action. So that means we need to... My focus, all of my efforts have been rewarded. I am reinvigorated. So the warlock actually gains an extra ability. No. Empowered me. I am stronger than ever. And I will not fail them. And he became immune to melee damage, which is interesting because his other weakness was that he was weak to close ranged attacks. So that takes away all our melee damage against the warlock. And. Okay. The assassin got the ability to summon Advent Priest. So I think those are those white troopers, if I'm correct. And they gained a little bit more knowledge, but it's not too much. Yeah, okay. That's fine. That's fine. And they both have retribution planned, which is fine for now, I think. Left behind. There's a risk of capture on all covert actions. That is really annoying. And the aliens are on high alert, making it harder for XCOM to catch them unaware. Okay, so they're... I think the second one is preferable. And they're gonna get a new alien facility in a week. And the next retaliation strike is only for next month. So that's perfectly fine. I think we're fine for now on this front. Because I really need to start making that resistance ring to make this better. So, but let's start hunting something. Because uh, we need to start hunting those, uh, those guys. And I think the Chosen Assassin is actually closest to gathering intel on the Avengers. So, yeah. I think we're going to hunt the Chosen Assassin. So we need to send out a Sergeant or higher, and their reward is hacking. So if we can get a Sergeant Specialist... Sarah actually is a Lieutenant Specialist. So I think I'm going to send her out. Um, together with... Do we send Heidi out as well? Um, or maybe we can send out one of the squaddies. I think Christina went on a mission before. But if we can get Heidi out there as well, we can start training our other rangers too. So let's put Heidi in the same mission. So these guys are bonded. So I don't know if that actually comes into practice into anything. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see. So let's begin the action. We reduced the chances of getting wounded because we sent three soldiers out. And we increased the faction influence on the Reapers as well. So let's begin that. And then we get our supply drop. Uh, we have three more days for the intel, but I think we need to focus on the supply drop first. Because it's the same amount of days. Yeah, but at least they look cool. They, they look really cool, so let's... Okay. Aha. There we go. So power relay operational, which means we can start building everything we want to our heart's content. So let's uh, start with the resistance ring first, because I... Uh, I feel like that's going to be the most important thing. Um, so, resistance ring. 
resistance ring. So it only takes 80 supplies. It takes 12 days to build, but probably can add an engineer here to speed that up. There we go. Decreasing the time by 50%. I think in four days we're going to start building more facilities. So as, I mean, four days is practically nothing. We get more supplies from clearing the debris anyway. So I think that's fine for now. We don't need to heal any wounds. So those engineers are doing their job remarkably well. So let's grab the rest of those supplies. There we go. We got all of it. So let's ignore everything else and get back to the intel we were scanning to. Avenger plotting new course. If you can hold that for two more days, that's going to be great because that would allow us to... What's this, by the way? There's a... There's a fist over here. Is that just because we have the resistance fully here? I don't know. There's a fist over here that I can't access. Fine. Let's get the intel. I'm guessing we're going to get a mission before that. Okay. Debris cleared. So that's our two engineers we get back, probably. Um... There's two things we really need to do. We need to start making the proving grounds and we need to start making resistance comms so we can spread out further. I think the proving ground is going to be the most interesting one. Um, we're going to build both of them anyway. So let's just do that and assign one of the engineers over there. Um, but that also means that we have... Yeah, we're almost done with the other clearing as well. We can make the... The communication center, we can do that over there as well. And there we go, Once we, we just went through the bridge and the uh, older debris was also cleared. So let's check that. I'm not going to build it over there because I think... Although... Yeah, why not? Let's put the resistance comms in the middle here. So that's also going to take quite a few times. And we can put one of our engineers over there. And now we're at power capacity, but... We can actually upgrade the power conduit over here. Add an additional workstation to the power relay, allow allowing an additional engineer to be staffed here. Huh. So that adds two power, allowing us to make another room. I want to save up my supplies for now. So let's just... We're building three freaking uh, facilities at the same time. So that's going to be enough for one month, I think. So let's check out the Guerrilla Tactics School. Because I think we might actually... So let's do that and check the Guerrilla Tactics School. Let's check the combat tactics. Ah, we still don't have a captain. Should have probably boosted Heidi anyway, so we could get squad size 2. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing, nothing yet over here. We still need captains of pretty much everything to uh, upgrade our abilities there. So, let's get back to the bridge. In three more days we have plated armor. That's why I'm saving up my supplies. But I'm guessing we're gonna get an, a mission before that. Because um, yeah, we've been going for... Yeah, seven days in this month already. Even more. Yeah, because we're only 17 days away from the supply drop. So, incoming. There we go. That's just the Avatar project, I think. Yeah. That's gonna... One or two. One. We've been pretty lucky on that front. Because, yeah. Let's just grab that. 38 intel, that's not a lot, but it's something. Um, and that means we don't actually have anything else left. Oh. As a reminder to you, Commander, until you return to your place at the Elder's side, all who would stand with you in defiance will suffer the same fate. Okay, so the Assassin is getting really close to knowing where the adventure is, by the way. And I don't know what's going to happen after that. Um, but she reduces that region by 18 supplies. That's not too much of a problem. The knowledge is worse. So, I know we need to make the ring. I'm working on it. It's currently being built, game. It's one day away. Give me a bit of slack here. Um, I could build another radio relay. You know what? Let's check out the black market first. Because I want to check the black market. In a day we're going to have that resistance ring. So even moving over there might actually trigger that. Uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't. So let's just check the black market. There we go. And we get 117 supplies for 35 intel. That's always interesting. An engineer chosen assassin information. Uh, or rushing research. I think the 117 supplies is actually pretty 
useful so let's get that because if we get plated armor we're going to be spending that on that exactly so let's just get the supplies and the rest i'm going to wait because i feel like i need to start getting more uh loot from the enemies i've been really unlucky because most of the enemies that had loot actually blew up and I usually only blow up one or two enemies in a single mission. But from the 13 or 12 enemies from the last mission, only one of them had loot. And it was a mutant that I blew up. So, what else to do? We can't make contact just yet. So, we either start gathering intel or we build another radio relay with the supplies we just got. I think I'm going to do that. So, that's another 100 supplies on top of what we already gain. So let's install that radio relay. It doesn't really do much for us aside from increasing the supplies, but I mean, let's start building that. And there we go, resistance ring, finally. We can check that out right now. What is this going to allow us to do? Does that allow us to do more covert actions? I would assume. I'll also increase the influence we have. So, uh, engineer required. We can actually put one of our engineers over here. Okay, done. Covert actions. We already have a covert operation underway, Commander. It will take some time to complete. Okay, so we but we probably can reinitiate covert actions from here after that one is done. What does the upgrade do? Unlock an additional slot for XCOM to assign resistance orders. Okay, it's also pretty interesting, but we need power for that, and we don't really have that. So let's go back. We have an engineer there now. Um, I could staff an engineer at the power relay. But that's just going to give us extra power, which is not something I really want to do. So let's put that last engineer in the alien debris clearing over here. So let's start with one. And then uh, a few days I'm going to have an extra one. Although I could also grab the other engineer from the resistance ring. But no, I don't want. I want to start using the resistance ring now that I have it, because I have no idea what the benefits are to that. If we get a few more hours, we can get plated armor. Come on, come on! I know we can do it. I suppose nope. That worked, oh. We might as well keep it up, there we go. The covert action actually completes. Looks like Conray Naylor has been hiding out in Africa in between attacks on our forces. Our partnership has gotten us this far. Now we just need to find out exactly what hole that thing crawled back to. We have to be careful though once we've backed it into a corner it's sure to fight harder than ever. So Sarah's hacking has increased. We gained experience for all three of them. And she they all gained increased cohesion which is not important because of course Heidi and Sarah already had cohesion. So probably not the best idea to put bond mates on the same covert action. We picked up some new information on the Chosen during our last covert action. Okay. So XCOM's influence with the Reapers has increased to medium. To win over my people, Commander. And there we go. So we get more faction orders and we get additional covert actions. My people are up for some additional work if you've got any orders for The speed of all weapons research is increased by 15% and additional operations to benefit the resistance. So that's a sign of new covert action. Influence with the resistance factions has motivated them to share some new information on the Chosen. So now, of course, we get wounded and capture chances, which is interesting. Um, let's see. Ooh, 15 ability points. I think the ability points is probably the best. We could negate the risk of getting a soldier wounded here with a bit of intel. I should probably do that. So let's gain ability points. We're basically trading intel for ability points, so let's allocate that. Uh, then we have a normal soldier, but wait, let's, because this one actually gets a promotion. Who do we want to give a promotion to? There were a few of them that actually just got a promotion. So I think if we give Kelly a prom another promotion, that's actually going to give us the, the quickest way of getting her to another level. So Kelly and I think she's actually bonded with Heidi. Or not. I think so, right? So... Probably not the best idea. You know what? Let's give the promotion to Elena. And let's send her out together with 
Lena, because that will give, give them more cohesion. That does mean I'm not going to be able to use them in the next mission. Both of them. Um, and if I want to do it like that, I probably should give Lena the promotion instead. And then Elena right next to her. I think this is going to be the best way of doing this. So we gave them the intel and we got two of them to... We got a Reaper and a Templar on a Reaper mission. So that should actually increase some something as well, I would assume. So let's confirm the action and send them out. Order my people to get underway immediately. Okay, so that's, yeah, I can't use Lena in the next mission, but that's not too bad because we got Heidi back. Um, okay, so there's a new alien facility. You can actually view it and it's just over there. That's good. That's good. Not a problem. They're going to get, oh, only one bar. That's definitely not a problem. Zero days to plated armor. So I'm guessing if I just press the button now, we're going to get plated armor. Our research was yes. Commander. Yes, that is awesome. So, uh, plated armor, and we get predator armor and tempest gauntlets as well. Ooh, and new proving ground projects for the exosuit and the spider suit. Awesome, tempest gauntlets. The pair temp templar gauntlets were designed to amplify the user's psionic energy, but at their core, they're still gauntlets. Stout metallic gloves capable of withstanding extremes well beyond what flesh alone can take. With magnetic plating layered over the existing structure, they now provide much more than the original enhancement they were created for. So does that increase... Damage for Templars? And then Predator Armor using Scavenged Plate of Advent Armor. This suit provides increased protection and additional inventory capacity for our soldiers. And we get the Spider Suit and Exo Suit as well. Oh, yeah, so that's for the heavy weapons. So if we equip somebody with an Exo Suit, they can uh, get extra heavy weapons. And Ghost Weapons are inspired. That is just... That is just amazing. I mean... And the Stun Lancer autopsy is now instant, so let's do that first. The Advent Stun Lancer was apparently outfitted with the intention of serving as a civilian peacekeeping unit within the city centers. Although they are equipped with weapons capable of administering non-lethal blows, recent reports indicate an increasingly aggressive stance taken by these units. Okay, yeah, we kind of knew all that, but we get the Arc Blade and the Ionic Rip Jack. Don't know what the last one is. So the Ionic Rip Jack, a raw electrical current jumps between the blades of this modified skirmisher claw. Although the mechan mechanism seems reasonably well crafted, inconsistencies in the skirmisher's manufacturing process leave questions as to whether this was an intentionally designed upgrade or an accidental discovery. And then, of course, the Arc Blade. It boosts the standard sword combat effectiveness with the addition of an electric field capable of stunning enemies that are not killed outright. So Arc Blades are pretty cool. But let's go with Gauss Weapons. Now only six days away. Begins immediately, Commander. Magnetic I'll Sniper Rifles. When I have a full report available. That's going to be awesome. And maybe we get some more extra weapons for the, uh, the other class. Or we might get a Magnetic Factor Rifle. But I'm guessing we're going to get a mission in between first. So... There we go, this is not gonna... There we go, finally! We're gonna get a lot of missions right after one another, I feel like. So let's review the targets. So we have South Africa. To protect the device, we get a scientist. And we counter a hidden event. But we want to counter that specific uh, East Africa again, I think. Because, yeah, hack the workstation and we... Yeah, we don't risk the capture of all COVID actions, so... Because increased detection radii is not that much of a problem. So I think East Africa... Well, what do we get for West Africa? We get a ranger, a sergeant ranger, but it is difficult. So I'm definitely going to go for East Africa. So let's head over there. But of course, before we do anything, we need to, we need to upgrade these women. We need to upgrade these women. Because if we go to armor, we get... Oh, crap. We don't have enough alloys. Should have checked that first, probably. So we're not going to upgrade them just yet. Because I know I can get alloys from the black market, because I need to go back down for that. And I don't want to risk losing this mission. So, one more mission with normal armor. But after that, we're going to be... We're going to have awesome armor. But... Ooh, these are also so good. But we need alloys for pretty much everything in here. Oh, we actually have a mag auto pistol as well. So there's definitely a lot of stuff in here. 
but we don't have a skirmish we can use, so those two we can't use, and the Mag Alter Pistol we've barely used on our, uh, our Templar, so the Templar Gauntlet is pr probably going to be the preferable upgrade. Um, and then Alloys. Do we use the Alloys on the Arc Blade? Because the Arc Blade, I don't think it actually increases the damage of the blade. So let's just leave it at that for now and check out our troops here. So I think we're going to keep Heidi because I want to have another... Uh... I mean, this is actually a pretty good squad. I think I'm going to remove Jacqueline again to get Yvonne with us because Yvonne actually has um, the shredding ability. So let's edit this a little bit and let's give Sarah the auto loader we picked up so she can uh, have a free reload like that and also give the flashbang to Yvonne as we're used to so uh, double bonds over here so that's going to be cool for this moderate difficulty mission but next time we're going to go on Operation Ghost Killer so uh, but before that I'm going to take a little break so thank you guys enormously for watching hope you guys enjoyed this episode of XCOM 2 the Valkyrie playthrough and next time we're going to go uh, and hack a workstation in an advent facility so thank you guys again enormously for watching and see you in the next episode of XCOM 2 the Valkyrie playthrough goodbye